Good evening, everyone. We are back with our class of Berachot, blessing, blessing number nine. After all the high holidays and all the laws we've learned about the high holidays, we are back in track, studying laws of Berachot. Today we'll finish Ha'etz. We're going to continue with Ha'adama. And we're going to ask some questions, interesting questions. Uh, Baruch Hashem. Thank you so much. God bless. You should know if you have the chance ever, ever to host Torah class, go for it. Amen. Embrace it in both hands and never let go. This is the best blessing you ever can ever have in your life. To have a Torah class in the house it can change many things in life for the best. It can remove a lot of trouble, troubles and problems because Torah protects. That's it. Just remind you something very interesting. I do know that it's a blessing. The Talmud says many years ago, there was a many, it's a very interesting story with King David. He took the ark all the way to Yerushalayim. On the way, something very bad happened. A guy by the name Uza, Uza, he was on the chariot that carries this ark. And he thought that the ark is about to fall. You know, there was two cows carrying it. I mean, um, was hooked to that chariot. So he jumped to, to grab it. As soon as he did it, he, he, he got a heart attack and died. And I'm David to understand that he was punished from Shammai. Because when you do a mitzvah, you're protected. It turns out that David did, King David did the mistake in the beginning with. But by not letting the Levin carry the ark. Who needs to carry the ark? Only the We don't put it on a chariot. Mm -hmm. Why that happened? It happened because King David wrote in Tehillim, Zemirot Ayuli Hokecha, your laws is sings to me, like songs. Hashem says, my, my laws, my commandments, my Torah to you like songs. You think, you, 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 you look at it you, or you treat it too, uh, too lightly. I'm going to show you that you're going to do a mistake. In halacha, so simple, every, even kids in school knows. Ask any kid who should carry the ark. They the levim. This is their job. Why you put it on a cart, on a chariot? So he didn't want to move on. It was very sad to him. So he left it at the house. It's called Bet Oveda Edomi. Some says he came from Edom, some says he's a convert, some says that he's there. Yeah. And he left it there. He was a very, I don't know if it was the mayor of the place, he was a very honorable person, well respected. So what he did, he left it there. This guy said, the ark is in my house? He dedicated the whole room for it. He closed the door, he told everybody, you're walking next to that door. He called his firstborn son. He says, every day you open the door, you map, you clean. There's no dust, no spider webs, nothing. This is your job. You don't go to the field. You don't go harvesting. You don't do anything. This is your job. You're guarding it with respect. He was there for three months. There was really nothing to do. The door is closed. There's no dust. But he wants to make sure. Much respect to the ark. And then David hears that so much blessing came to this person. Every day. He hears another good news. Uh, his his uh, son's success in everything they do. Uh, his daughter-in-law got pregnant. Wherever in his house uh, the delivery of a baby it was easy, very easy. No epidural, nothing. It was easy. Everything they touch turns to gold. Wow. King David was so happy, he says, which means that there's a blessing. Now it changed the whole format, and they were with the ark to Yerushalayim. You can read it every six steps they stopped, and they did celebration, and it was unbelievable. And they give a lot of food to the poor, dancing, and all that. And then Talmud says something very interesting. Why Hashem blessed, you can learn from here a great lesson. 
why I should bless this guy for just hosting some inanimate object. They didn't really do too much for him. He says, if you, the Talmud says, if you host a Talmud Hacham, a rabbi, a scholar in your house, you'll get a reward even much more than that because you host him, you let him to drink, eat, maybe to a room to stay for Shabbat or whatever. Your reward will be much higher because that's what Hashem pays. Because what, what, what is the Ark? What is Sefer Torah? A rabbi, a scholar, is a walking Sefer Torah. The, for, the Sefer Torah, the Torah is worthless without the rabbis or the students or the scholars studying and teaching them. If you don't teach it, well, what's the point of having Torah? So you get much higher reward if you host the Mitchacham in your house. You see that Rabbi is coming from Eretz Israel, great scholars, Chacham Ovadia or his son or other came to us. And there were people who were fighting in New York, who is going to host them? Mm-hmm. In Mexico, when they come to Mexico, shh, only the rich people get. And among them, they have, uh, you know, who is going to get the rabbi to stay in his house? It's a big kavod, it's a great honor. Not only, it doesn't have to be the chief rabbi of Israel, any great scholar that comes to your house and you take care of him. Hashem will pay you a thousand times more. So, <clears throat> we've learned that everything we eat or we drink, we have to say barakha before and after. And we focused on fruits of wild trees and the less barakhot. And I'm going to finish this part of saying barakhot over fruit trees with a question about what kind of blessing we do over blueberries and cherries. So, it's a simple one. If the root dies, it's adama. Oh, it's like okay. tomatoes, it's like cucumbers, right? Yeah. Eggplants, strawberries. strawberries, right? So, the correct blessing for blueberries and cherries is bure peria etz, like you do for apple. Even if someone finds them growing on the wild trees, this is because these fruits are good to eat. The correct blessing for cranberries and raspberries, however, we're going to be bore periyadama. If someone mistakenly recited the blessing of bore periyadama, his blessing is valid. Okay? There's fruit called sabres. You know sabres? No. They call Israeli sabra. We used to call it sabra. Sabrita? Come from the word sabres. Sabres is sabar. It's a small fruit that have many, many uh, thorns. It's on it. it's a small like needles. Could be red. Could be red, could be green. It's called sabar, sabres. The great blessing of four pickly pears is bure peria etz. Okay, so we learned that and we are moving to Something very interesting. <clears throat> what do you say, Bracha? Everybody knows that. Over melafefon, cucumbers. Uh, Adama, it's obvious, right? Yeah, One day, I was in a place, and some of my family member, he took melafefon, he dipped it, uh, a cucumber, he dipped it uh, in salt, put some uh, lemon, and he says, Baruch atam olam she'akol niya bidvaro. Say she'akol. I look at them, and this guy, he said in yeshiva, it's not that he forgot the, the Adama. Mm-hmm. I said to him, uh, you said she'akol? He said, no, that, that's a bracha. He was playing with me. He knew why he was even doing this. Right? He says, he's he, he saying she'akol. I said, this melafefon, it's cucumber. What do you mean she'akol? He said, Adama. Yeah. He said, no, this melafefon, <laughs> this, this melafefon, this, this cucumber is she'akol. I said, are you crazy? It has to be Adama. We're saying Shakol. No, this Shakol. I'm telling you it's Shakol. So tell me why. <laughs> so, ah, now that you're asking, and now you have to tell me that it's special growing. That it grows on water only. What? Doesn't grow from earth. What? They do it in greenhouses, and farms, mm-hmm. in layers. It's like, it looks like uh, I don't know, ten and a half, uh, fifteen story, uh, story, right? Oh really? Listen, making in one small area a lot of cucumbers. The taste is good. I don't know if it's good as when it grows from ground, but it grows on water only. Therefore, it loses its status of Bure Priyadama. 
So it's Yaakov, but it looks the same. It looks beautiful. But it has so, seeds inside and everything? Everything. So Rabbeinu, yeah, like... like look, you, know, you know the Italian melafefon, the small one? Oh, yeah, These yeah, are the yeah. best. They're selling the big one in two, or in pairs, oh. wrapped. Mm -hmm. They're not as good as the small one. The small yeah. one are the best. Oh, wow. It's exactly the same one. Rabbeinu. In Israel, they are the most popular. Rabbeinu now, do, do, do everything in Israel is <laughs> delicious. Do they sell those water ones here? I don't know. I don't think oh, so. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. have to check in. I don't know. Um, some special stores are selling uh, natural food or whatever. But to be safe, uh, we so, say but they're selling it. If you don't know, you don't know. Uh, you have to find out. The correct blessing for any hydroponic uh, produce is shehakol niyabidvaro, like you do over something that doesn't go from ground, because it doesn't go from ground. If someone mistakenly recited the blessing of Borepriya Adama, because this is Borepriya Etz, over a hydroponic tree fruit, his blessing is valid. There is no need to suspect that the, uh, the produce found in a supermarket was grown uh, hydroponically. If it is not, to answer your question, if it is not advertised as such, so you assume that everything is either from tree or from ground. Since the overwhelming majority of the product, uh, product uh, the produce grown uh, for the market is grown in the ground. They found out also that growing this, uh, except the convenience and all that, they can control the problem they had with snack and pests and, and, and rats and all that. It's in a well-kept greenhouse, it's air-conditioned, and they're making, it's easy to cut when, instead of, you know, uh, bending and whatever. So they found it easier. Today, technology is amazing. You know, almost the most great invention out there from each country it comes. Israel. Thank you very much. <laughs> Israel. Great minds in Israel. Okay, one more thing, and we finish with that. Plants grown on uh, gravel without any soil or other organic uh, substance, uh, such as uh, alfalfa uh, sprouts, call for a blessing, for the blessing of shakol niyabidro. Shakol niyabidro is a general blessing. If you don't know what to say, say this. Shakol niyabidro. That covers for everything. Till you learn the other brachot. Everything. Okay, uh, I'm going to start Siman Resh Gimel 203, page 91, and I'm going to share with you a few other chod, then we move to our next class. Okay, we're starting Barakat Birkat Perota Adama, the blessing over ground fruit. The correct blessing for ground fruit is, what is it? Bore, Pri Hashem create. Pre its fruit, Adama from ground, Adama. Okay. It is important to make sure to pronounce this syllable, Ha, and not to omit it carelessly. You know what some people do? Baruch Ata Hashem, Malak Mochalam, Borei Pri Adama, Borei Pri Adama. Mistake. It didn't fulfill the mitzvah. Borei Pri Ha Adama. Bore pri ha et sheha kol niyavidro shakol shakol. There's no word shakol. Say it correctly. So so. Motzi lechem, motzi lechem. No, ha motzi lechem. Mesonot, mesonot, mesonot. Bore pri mesonot. What's a mesonot? It's v'samer or with zayin. Bore mine mesonot, like you say zebra. Mizanot, no misanot. Right? Um, if someone mistakenly recited the blessing of Burepriya Etz over ground fruit, his blessing is void. Not valid. Yeah, void. At all. Why? If I take a banana and I say Adama, if I take uh, strawberries and I say Adama, it's fine. If I take apple and I say it's fine. Mm -hmm. What if I say over 
apple, ha'adama, mistakenly. It's okay. okay. Why? At the end, it's grown from that. But if I say that on strawberry that grows on tree, I'm not really telling the truth. Right? Not that I'm lying, but it's not the correct. uh, Right? It's not correct. Therefore, you didn't fulfill the time, you have to rectify for it. You have to fix it and say it again. Uh, if someone would recite the blessing using the words bore peri ha etz or yotzer or or yotzer peri etz, create, he make up his own word. His blessing would be considered valid, okay? Or something um, that, I'm sorry, bore peri ha aretz. Aretz means that comes. He made up his own word that comes from the ground. Aretz means the ground. Or bore peri ha aretz. Aretz. Aretz means ground. It's valid. Because at the end of the day, you said something that is correct. It's not the exact, like you say, Adama. Ground. How do you say Adama in Spanish? Tierra. Huh? Tierra. Tierra? Okay, Tierra. So pretty much we have to pronounce the hey? Or because I... Every letter you have to pronounce. You know, people saying Shema Israel. 50 years, 60 years. And they never really said Shema Israel. Never. Why? Because they don't pronounce the words correctly. They don't. Shema, they say, Shema Yisrael. By the way, how to say that, like that, like that, like that. What do you do with your fingers? So you create the letter Shin, Shaddai. Shin, Dalet, Yud. Shaddai. Okay? These two go over the eye. And you say, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. You hear people saying, Shema, 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 ah, there's Ayin, no Shema. Shema is a different word. You know how many people saying Shema Israel incorrect? They never said Shema Israel in their life correctly. And it's written in Shema. No, no, they have no check mark on the Shema Israel. So what's the right way to say it? I'm going to repeat. Head after me, Shema. Shema. You say Shema, it sounds like either with Hey at the end or Aleph. It's not correct. The Ayin come from here. Shema, no. Shema, ah, ah. Like you're about to you choke. Ah. Shema. Like someone choking you, huh? Shema. Shema. Oh, you're fair, good. Shema. Huh? Shema. Close, close. Shema. Shema. Whoa, that was scary. <laughs> Shema. No. It's not Shema. Shema. You practice at home. Shema. Shema. You practice. Shema Yisrael. No, no, no. Shema Yisrael. Amonai Elohenu. Somebody says Elohenu, Elohenu. Where is the hey? Elohenu. You know, every letter counts. And every letter you mention, you say it in the holy language, you create yourself an angel. Shema. It's a missing Shema Israel. Your angels have no hands, no legs, no head. They're disabled. Shema, Shema Yisrael. Shema. They're going to chase after you. After 120 years, they're going to come. <laughs> what did you do to me? Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem. Eh, so listen to this. Everybody says, Mona, everybody. When he says, Echad, no, no, it's correct. No. Echad, it's, it's not correct. Echad. Echad. It also comes from here. Echad. Echad. No, you're saying from here, Echad. You say, Echad. Listen what you're saying. You're saying, Echad. I'm saying, Echad. One more time. Ehad, no Ehad, no Ehad. Like Ehud, Ehud, Ohad. Huh? Close, close. So practice, practice. So at least once in your life you do Shema Israel correctly. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Ehad. Okay? Practice, practice. It's sa- same with the blessing, the Berachot. You're already studying it, studying the correct way. Huh? Many people could be in yeshiva, 
I heard mm -hmm. many rabbis, rabbis that don't pronounce the Shema Israel correctly. For years. For years. They don't. Till I tell them, if I hear, I can't help it. I have to tell them. Okay, so you practice at home? Questions really quick and then moving to the next one. Okay, one more halacha and we'll be done with that for today. Banana. The proper blessing for banana is Bore Priya Dhamma. If someone mistakenly recited the blessing of Bore Priya Etz, his blessing is valid. Why? Because there's a debate among the rabbis if it's tree or not tree. They found out eventually that it's not considered as a tree because the, every season the roots died and it grows underground new roots. Nonetheless, you see from the outside the tree trunk like it's a regular tree. It's not. The, these rules apply as well to for pineapples, strawberries, and sesame seeds. Okay, eggplant and sweet peppers, Vizasha, we'll talk next time. Today we have a very interesting gate. We're starting a new gate. It's called the gate of Zerizut. Zerizut. We'll be back in two or three minutes with a new class, with a new gate of today. We finished. We're going to finish it in, in a minute or so. Um, jealousy. You finished it? You finished. Okay. Baruch Hashem. See you momentarily.